Afternoon, guys. So welcome to an episode of Luke's Garage. Um, it's not actually filmed in my garage today. As you'll see, we're actually in my living room. Um, and today we're going to be having a look at the CNC build that I've been sort of uh, quietly working on. Um, I don't really know how I came down this path, to be honest. It started off, you know, uh, modifying my Shapiko and I was doing you know, bits and pieces and I wanted to try and actually make um, a ball driven Shapiko or ball screw driven Shapiko, but that just wasn't happening. Uh, a couple of reasons. One, uh, it's actually really well built and designed around belts. So as soon as you start adding on additional carriages, it just doesn't really work. Uh, and secondly, uh, and probably most more consciously, you can't actually use it as a scalable model. So the extrusions are custom. Uh, you can't buy the exact same extrusions anywhere. And when you remove that, actually it's not scalable going forwards. So I set upon trying to build my own machine, I suppose, and it is a Shapiko at heart. It's got, or it's going to have a Shapiko uh, control board. Uh, I've got one from one of my spare machines, which I'm going to use to start the testing off and uh, build it. But what we've essentially got is, uh, I suppose it's three 8040 rails, uh, which are just standard V-slot uh, C-beam rails, actually. So you've got one along the X and then obviously two along the, uh, the Y axes there. Now that's all supported uh, on top of uh, some 6020 beams, which you can see at the front, middle and back. Uh, and then around that it's clad in a 12 millimeter thick aluminium. So I went for 12 because 10 seems a little bit um, a little bit thin. Um, in hindsight, it probably wasn't, but I wanted to make sure all the screws had something to lock onto. And to be honest, when you think, well, I'm probably not gonna build another one anytime soon, uh, might as well go all out. Now, the actual machine itself, uh, it's got around about 80 by 80 centimeter workspace. Uh, I have nicked something off the Shapiko and that is the ability to mill on the front. So when the uh, X carriage comes all the way right to the front, you're gonna be able to just mill uh, small pieces just on the front there. Now you'll see it's not connected to the ball screws right now. And that's because despite everything, uh, and actually ordering the um, the little couplings um, almost two months ago, I still haven't had any arrive. Uh, I'm at now on my third order. I'm trying to buy them from the UK, but apparently they don't have them in stock. So I'm waiting on that. Now the motors I'm using to drive it are these ones. They're quite chunky. Uh, they are Nemina 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 twenty threes. Uh, they have an ampage of one point eight amps. I think, or two amps maximum, which is in line with what the Shapiko board can push out. Uh, but importantly, with these ones, they've got a much higher torque rating than the standard Shapiko ones. It's about three times uh, that I'll, I'll try and dig out the spec and the model number somewhere else. But these are freely available on the internet. Now, around everything, it's built on the 20 millimeter rail system. Originally, I was looking at using just, uh, I suppose, maybe 15 millimeter. But again, it wasn't much more for the uh, uh, for the slightly larger uh, rails. Uh, but also because I wanted to use 1605 ball screws, the space between them it just sort of made sense to uh, uh, go for the larger ones originally. Um, in hindsight, I mean maybe I could have gone to 15s, but for what was probably a couple hundred quid in extra cost, it just maybe not even that to be honest, it didn't make sense. All my stuff is uh, Chinese own brand. Uh, I haven't bought anything genuine like her in wheels. To be honest, uh, I don't think I could ever appreciate it. My goal for this was to build a Shapiko, uh, rail driven Shapiko where I'd get rid of the ridges off pieces. I'm more uncomfortable at the moment that this is gonna do, do exactly that. Um, now mechanically, uh, I finished off the last plate this morning. Uh, so I was milling at 7 a.m. or something, which pleased the missus on a Sunday. And that's just the, uh, uh, a Z axis carriage plate. Um, I'm not really sure what else to say about it at the moment. It hasn't really been tested. All the rails move along. Uh, I've squared the uh, the Y rails and the X I haven't been able to yet because I'm still waiting on some additional screws. Um, it's heavy. It doesn't budge at all uh, when you know trying to twist it or, or bend it. I've tried to be uh, really good and make sure everything's reinforced. I mean, if we look at one of the corners as an example, Let's take you out of the mount. So if we have a little walk around the unit itself, 
So to start off with, you know, we've got 12 millimeter thick aluminium plate as the front. This holds in place the bearings and then the ball screws along the front. Obviously we've screwed this into the uh, X carriage, oh sorry, um, Y rail even. Uh, there's six screws holding that in place. Below that we've got four screws holding it in place into this um, uh, bottom support, so 60-20 uh, support. And then down the side I put in a couple of additional uh, screw points. So here we've got a, a six screw bracket which holds everything in place there. And that's mirrored through all four corners. On the Y axis, uh, or X, it's a bit confusing I suppose, but we've got uh, again 12 millimeter thick plate, milled four millimeter deep, eight screws holding, also four screws per carriage, eight in total. And then down the side, we've got five screws holding those in place, all torqued as well. We go along, got the exact same setup on the other side, and that's for all three beams. Now at the moment I haven't connected my ball screws because I, I can't actually drive it, drive it uh, other than one carriage at a time. I'm waiting for a few screws for the Z uh, and X, but we'll have a look at that. It's the exact same design principle, four millimeter deep, 12 mil aluminium into 12 mil aluminium, and then eight screws holding those down. For the Z carriage, slightly different. Um, I started with the idea of buying you know, multiple sheets of aluminium, different thicknesses to try and calculate what I might or might not need. It was getting a bit confusing. So I just bought a massive 88 by 100 sheet of aluminium 12 mil, and I just milled everything to thickness. So on this one, I can't move it down because it is connected. You've obviously got your uh, Z plate here. You've got your four, 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 and then you've got your ball screw in the middle. And then I've got my spindle mounting points here, 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 and here. Uh, and I've managed to actually mill the base of my spindle along the side so there's clearance for the ball screw uh, i've milled one millimeter deep there and then taken these uh this bracket here down to uh 10 millimeters so now it's 30 from here to here i think it is and you can see at the moment i've just got starting to get the electronics sorted uh, so i've got my touch uh or proximity switches but i'm still waiting on screws so i don't want to uh start that till i've done one thing at a time i suppose now the biggest problem I've got, to be honest, is this thing weighs a ton. Um, you know, I'm not exactly sure what it weighs, uh, but it's heavy. And I've somehow got to get this monstrosity, which is about one meter, well, the unit itself is one meter by one meter, about seven motors, into my garage. Uh, the problem I've got is I've got no way of uh, carrying it easily without the missus helping me. Um, and I've got nowhere to put it because it's got such a large profile. So I've got to build a new workbench for it. Anyway, that's a quick overview of the machine. Thank you very much for watching. Um, and hopefully this has inspired some other people to do something as stupid as build a very large machine they do not need. Cheers.